Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. Now, pardon me if this uh, sounds strange on the sound part of it. I'm still working with the backup microphone as the main microphone gets repaired. Now, this is the WTI crude contract overlaid over the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you can see here that the divergence is so incredible when we look at what happened the last time. You can see they both came up uh, about that rate of increase and you can see that the oil just kind of exploded, um, went straight up to that that move from about 40 five bucks all the way up to 150 bucks it tripled in a very short amount of time just over a year and then you can see uh, the stock market had started selling off before that crude rocketed to a new high and then completely crashed now the pattern that we're on right now is actually a longer pattern and it's um, the stock market just continuing to rally you can see we're on another leg up it appears um, and you can see that crude is going down so th this is just an incredible divergence it, it portends something ominous something very very large financial event is coming that's my take on this um, let's just look at today's action and, and move in closer you can see there's the divergence. Um, maybe we need to get into the minute chart, uh, probably five minutes. So oil is just continuing to fall. The stock market is rallying. How long can these things go on? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Now here's silver. Um, I was thinking that it was going to round off and go into new lows. I'm still thinking that it, it, it gets little rallies. And then it, uh, it they just fail rapidly and you can see here this is going to be the ascending formation let's put the volume in because that volume was so phenomenal in those two periods that we had uh, well it's not on here so this is just volume for March and February so the the phenomenal volume is back in the past but if we look at the trend line that we have here that's about where we are on this trend line so that you can see the breakdown is starting to happen and we're just going to look for more stacking opportunities uh, gold is weak as well it it took that crack where it got knocked down below that 1200 you could see that was that was really the the battle line that had been drawn in the sand for quite some time and they they managed to smack it down below and it, it didn't really bounce back so it's kind of falling off into new lows as well um, probably gonna drop down into new lows fairly soon now let's get to the the news here I wanted to cover this article on Zero Hedge about the debt now this the debt story that's going on with the Western governments is is just insane that that includes I would say China and Japan probably as well so who who's not in the West uh, Russia and all the other countries smaller countries but um, this story here Japan ties China as America's largest creditor as foreigners dump a record amount of treasuries one month ago when looking at December at the December update of foreign holdings of US Treasuries and specifically the two largest foreign creditors we said that China sold another six billion in Treasuries in the last month of 2014 which would have made it its US Treasury holdings equal to those of Japan if only Tokyo hadn't also sold over 10 billion in the same month moments ago the January update was released and while China continued to sell US paper liquidating another 5.2 billion in January and bringing its new total to the lowest since January 2013 Japan yes that Japan whose central bank is now monetizing 100% of its own debt 
issuance because the country is now effectively insolvent and absent constant monetization of its debt. It is finished. Bought $8 billion of U.S. debt in the process trying China, tying China as America's largest foreign creditor for the first time in history with both nations holding $1.239 trillion. So that's a pretty amazing story. You can see the chart there. Um, it's absolutely unsustainable. It, it's kind of like Greece and Spain buying Greece's debt, Greece buying Spain's debt, the EU buying both of their debt. Um, it's just a giant house of cards with everybody buying everybody else's debt and they're all insolvent. Uh, it's it's really the craziest situation I think we've had in world economics for the last probably 70 years, what's happening right now. And I wanted to take you to this comment from Milwaukee Mark. I think that pretty much sums it up here. And, and this is something that I've been warning about for a very long time. The, I, I am totally convinced this is coming. So he, he summarizes it pretty well. He says, Time to start mandating all 401s. Company pensions and IRAs get moved into MIRAs. That's Obama's new retirement plan. Of course, you'll lose access to the equity. Interest rates will be well below the real inflation rate. You'll be taxed on any interest paid. There will be means testing before you can access your own funds. It cannot be willed to your descendants. It will revert back to the government upon your or your and your spouse's death. There, shortfall fixed. Oh, and you will be assured by a smiling liberal that this is all in your best interest and 47% of the public will buy into that explanation. Fantastic commentary. That, I believe, is exactly what they're going to do. And so... It's, it's getting very, very late if you haven't moved that money out of there. Now, I want to look at the debt to the penny because they mentioned here this amount of bonds that were sold. Uh, they had a record right here. In January, there was a record $55 billion in U.S. Treasury sold question is who's buying them. Um, so that's a record. So that tells you if there's a record number of treasuries sold, then we're still going deeper into debt. Now, the debt to the penny right now actually looks fairly good because uh, it's before we take that big run up. And so you can see we have 17.5 trillion a year ago and we're at 18.152. So that, that's right on target to that 660 billion that, uh, well, I'm sorry, let me do the math for you real quick. Um, if we look at that number here, 55 billion, and we multiply that times 12 and say that's the average, then that's about 660 uh, or so billion dollars, and that comes very close to this debt to the penny number. Now I wanted to talk about the GDP because if you remember the reports about how Obama has one of the best records, it's, it's kind of crazy because you have the right wing group over there saying that Obama is the biggest spender, the biggest deficit spender, created the worst debt and deficits of any president in history nearly doubling the debt and will probably double the debt by the end of his term, his second term. And then you have the defenders of this administration on the other side saying that Obama's debt to GDP numbers are better than his predecessors. So I wanted to look at this GDP issue because debt to GDP is a decent measure if you're in an inflating money supply it makes sense you can't run constant numbers here and really get anything from that because what are those dollars worth less and less every day 
But what they always trot out, and we know they've been jiggering with GDP, but let's just go with the traditional GDP here. This chart here is, hopefully you can see this because I had to, I couldn't find a larger one. I had to stretch it out a little bit. This is from 2012, and this is industry as percentage of GDP. And uh, if you drill down here, you can see this is really kind of a joke. Now, the history of GDP, it, it used to be called GNP. That was the figure that everybody cited, gross national product. Now they changed that when they went with the free trade stuff and the, their GATA and, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, NAFTA and GATT and all these other free trade agreements, they started to begin to calculate gross domestic product and it's it's confusing it, it, it there's a lot of things in there and I don't want to go into that discussion but just keep in mind that they made a change there so this is the GDP the gross domestic product this is the US GDP broken down now the first thing I want you to notice is what what most of us would consider uh, under the traditional understanding of the creation of wealth and what wealth is and how nations become wealthy what those factors are in GDP and you can see here we'll start right here um, starting at the very top and moving to the right we have traditionally what goes into GDP what we, what we traditionally consider to make countries wealthy would be their agriculture their forestry their fishing hunting, I don't know, um, but that's 1.2%. Now you can see mining comes in at 2.6%. Utilities, that's kind of iffy, I don't know, but we'll put that in there. Construction, and then that's 3.6%. And then you've got your durable goods manufacturing, and you've got your non-durable goods manufacturing. This group here is what I consider to be the areas of GDP that actually increase the wealth of the nation. This is where a country actually is creating something of value. These other aspects of GDP or categories of GDP are questionable at best and others are outright negative. And so you can see how small of a piece of the pie this is. It's actually the whole thing there is only one sixth of the pie. Now, wholesale trade and retail trade, I'm not gonna talk about those, Those that's kind of a wash. Transportation and warehousing, same thing. Information, does that really add to the wealth of society? Yeah, if, if there's some efficiencies added, I think so. Finance and insurance, no, because it's run by criminals. That doesn't add anything to the wealth of the nation real estate and rental and leasing no again that's just another big ponzi that they're running that really doesn't add anything the professional scientific and technical services well there's some but science now is has become a, a re really big racket in a lot of ways and kind of tied to the education establishment and we can see the real scientific the hard sciences are, are kind of being taken over by other countries. Most of the scientists, they come from other countries, they come and train here, and then they leave and go back to the countries. Management, well, there's no comment about that. Administrative waste management, educational services. Now, I can't believe that that's that small. I'm not sure how they calculate this because we spend an unbelievable amount of money. But unfortunately, the education that we have in this country uh, really isn't education. It's just pretty much a bunch of mind control. And let me make a brief aside on that. Um, whenever I'm looking at education, I always hark back to my mom's education and her mother, who was actually a school teacher for a period of time, and the, the teaching that they had there. They had the one-room schoolhouse. And in that one-room schoolhouse, uh, they had books, they had the Bible, they had some math books, and the main way they learned, which actually is a very effective way of learning, is that you would have kids go up one at a time up to the blackboard 
and they would write out something, they would read something to the class, or they would figure a math problem in front of the class. Now, how much does that actually cost to do that? Well, it doesn't really cost anything, and it teaches kids how to read, write, and arithmetic. We're not doing that. We're doing a bunch of social uh, mind control. So education, as far as the public schools, that doesn't add anything to GDP. It probably takes away health care and social assistance. That's another big drain. There's no way that you can argue that uh, you, you possibly could argue that if you had health care that was effective, that actually made people uh, more healthy or repaired their health, that it would be an addition to the GDP. But the health care that we have and the social assistance that we have are huge drains on the wealth of the nation because they're so uh, poisonous. I don't even have time to go into the nightmare that, that we have in health care. Arts and entertainment, come on, that's a joke. Uh, accommodation and food service, that's a joke. Federal government, the federal government adds to our GDP. No, it doesn't. It takes away. Other services except government against services. And here's state and local government, almost 10%. So keep that in mind whenever you hear someone say that, well, our debt isn't that high compared to our GDP. Our GDP is a joke. Uh, this this only one sixth of this GDP is or maybe one quarter is something that adds to the wealth of the nation and many of the others are actually a drain so let's jump over and look at the latest pick that I have but this is the one I'm looking at um, not really urgent so I'm not doing it as a member update just something to keep your eye on and that's this half ounce silver goat. Now I went down through the elephant series and I checked the prices on Atmex, checked the prices on JM Bullion, and they definitely do increase year by year, but I also went and checked them on eBay and they don't nearly uh, increase at the same rate that they do as the years fall off on eBay. So you can still go out on eBay right now and get a 2010, 2011 uh, elephant, Somali elephant, for in the 20s, even though you can't buy them for anything near that on Atmex. So I'm not, that's the reason I didn't include that. Now that Somali elephant, the 2015, it's still a great deal. It's under $19 for the coin. But because of that, the resale, which doesn't uh, keep up with Perth, um, I'm going to go with Perth. This is the one I'm going to be watching. Uh, they have about 1,400 of these. And the one ounce has just gone too high at around 25 bucks. You can see that you can get two of the half ounce for less than 24 bucks. And the way the half ounces have performed, um, I don't know if the accurate price here on Atmex for the uh, half ounce dragon is um, you know going to be matched in other places I didn't research it but I was fairly shocked to find um, the half ounce dragon now is let, let me do these by price I won't say that they're selling but I will say that they're trying to sell this half ounce dragon here for $34 a coin. And I remember getting those for 12, 13, 14, 15, all the way up to $20. So that's not what you're seeing on eBay, but the fact that they're asking that for those coins, that's pretty amazing. So the, the half ounce goat, that is going to be the one that I'm gonna be watching as we look for some kind of drop into new lows. Not guarantee that we're going to get it, but the market does seem to be drifting off and kind of rolling over. If we do get that, that's the coin I'm going to be watching. And we'll talk to you next time.